I've discussed this in a previous video um, and it's how I create my colour palettes and how I sort of consider colour because I love colour. I mean I might go through stages where I'm thinking about particular colours but I like experimenting with colour and I really love what colour can actually do to you. I think that it's really important to mess with colour, to see what sort of mixtures really appeal to you and also what unusual juxtapositions of colour you can get and the lovely nuances of colour because paints respond to the substrate so differently. Some, some of these colours and gestures you achieve only on paper so you do have to sort of really think what it is you are trying to achieve when you are doing something and then of course you have to let it happen when you're working. So I do colour swatches and I get little packets of colour just so that I can really think about what it is that I really want to use and what sort of, I don't know, comments that the colours make. You know, these, those are really beautiful colours, but they're quite harsh, quite heavy. But you, I really like that mix, and maybe with a grey, some sort of a grey. There's a nice mixture of that, those colours there. So the idea would be that you would, I don't know, involve them together in some way. They don't need to be those same tonal variations, but they start you off with ideas. So I'm going to mix those sort of colours together and see how I feel the pink and I absolutely love this lime green as well um, and these lovely oranges and reds you see them they're such beautiful beautiful colours so really really utilise what you can out of them so I've got a palette put some colour on there and a palette knife and it's just a question of you know, making choices I mix it with a bit I mix up some paint on the palette mix it really well so that the pigments are all together that's this lovely bright yellow, lemon yellow, and some ochre. And the ochre I didn't like with it, it made it look like ice cream. And I pop it in a pot, get a bit of acrylic bonding age. Oops, far too much. I can pour some of that out though, because it's not mixed. Get some acrylic bonding agent, mix that together. And I'm going to take some time doing this. I'm going to get the whole load of colours together in this way. Add a bit of water to it again. Oh, not again, I haven't added water yet. So I've got a solution of it that's going to melt through to the papers. Put a lid on it. Give it a really good shake. Right, that's one colour ready. And I'm going to do the whole lot. Do all of these. I think that's one of my favourite colours, is this ochre and yellow mixed together. It makes the most amazing rich yellow. I mean, how do I put, how do I put that? I mean, just look at that orange. It's so difficult, isn't it? I mean, that's such an amazing colour. Oh, each time you... That is stunning. I get so carried away with colours. That is just unbelievable. I'm going to keep that. So again, pick it all up, bung it in your pot, put a bit of uh, acrylic bonding agent and a bit of water and mix it up and then I can just keep it to one side can't I and then I'll be able to throw it about the place I'll have so much of it that I've got plenty to use because it's very frustrating when you have a colour that you really like and it runs out it's extremely frustrating so that's not be similar to that, see? But I need tons of these containers. Right, I still need a really nice bright orange. So I know I need that and I don't want to add red to it because red's going to just be too red. I need another orange. 
to mix the oranges, the quality of the orange that you're mixing it with, or the red, is really important. I mean, these colours are so gorgeously sensitive. So that's an orange pyrrole, and that is a cadmium orange. I'll just show you the two different on the palette. And you have to determine sort of the depth of the orange that you want and think what's in those oranges and experiment with it. For instance, do you put in an ochre? What quality of yellow do you use with it and what quality of red do you use with it? I mean, all these things make really subtle differences and are really worth considering. So I've got cadmium yellow medium hue there. That is cadmium yellow deep hue and it, you can see it's got a richer more intense orange, deeper yellow. This is just cadmium orange, so that should be the same as that. Um, and it's a different make, so it's slightly different, slightly more uh, raw colour. So you just have to think about it, and do you take it down with yellow? Do you take it down with white? Do you use the ochre? And what quality red do you use? Do you want a pink red or a cadmium, a really deep cadmium red? Uh, so all those things are to be considered. That, that's all I'm trying to say. And I can't tell you how to mix colour, I don't think. I think that's something you have to learn through experience. For instance, if I wanted this orange, which is like a mix between these two, um, I mean, do I really need to fuss? It's up to you, isn't it? It's up to you to know whether you need to fuss or not. I mean, for this colour, I would probably go for this cadmium yellow. That's a cadmium yellow medium hue, a white, and this cadmium orange. But I would use a bit of white and I probably would use an ochre, just to give it the richness. So I like this, which is a lemon yellow. I just absolutely love this colour. So I would start with my lemon yellow because I want this extreme brightness of it. I'm going to go for a bit of this orange, which I shouldn't mix the brushes with, but I don't care. And again, that's, well, that's a gorgeous, intense orange, but I want to take it down a bit. I want it more sort of cream orange. So I am going to put a little bit of ochre in it. And it takes down that, really, really takes off the sharpness, and even a little bit of white. And that's unbelievable, that's really taken it back down again. You know, taken it right off what I want. So I'm now going to go for cadmium yellow, medium hue, and then that's brought it back up again to this unbelievable, rich, ochre, yellow orange. I mean, it's an absolutely stunning colour. But, you know, all these things are there to discover, aren't they? All these things are there to play with. I mean, I'm gonna keep that colour, I think that's absolutely gorgeous. So that was white, ochre, lemon yellow, and cadmium yellow medium hue and this bright orange from here which is just cadmium orange and no red I mean if I wanted it to go a deeper orange I can add a red but it really changes the quality you know these colors that are mixed already like the orange they have that quality in them they have in any case it's difficult isn't it it's a difficult one to go through uh, it's a difficult one to just to consider and it's a difficult one to know you know exactly you can make notes if you're pedantic about this sort of thing or you can use it just as a very spontaneous intuitive way I mean I could take bring in that yet yeah, orange yeah that's what I want more yeah that's what I want so that is orange pyrrole added to that and it adds that a, a, a fantastically luminous strange lovely color well worth it right found some quinacridone red and that's i'm hoping is the color no look it's too it's a lovely lovely color but it ain't what i wanted but i got i thought that was so right i just bummed it in Ooh. 
Oops, lady, just try that. That is a phosphorescent red there. That's more like it. Right, I haven't noted all those colours down. And I'm going to put a bit more of that in. I mean, the phosphorescence won't stay, obviously, but I don't really want it to. Oh, now that's it. Crikey, Mikey, that's amazing. All right, well, that's that. Lovely, that's beautiful. I can keep that. So I'll just put it into my tub, add my matte bonding agent, and then I'm ready to go for tomorrow. So I'm just going to do some really amazing coloured papers for you to have a look at tomorrow. And again, I refuse to allow myself to get bored. I want as many beautiful colours as I can possibly get, and I don't want to just stay with the same colours. I want to experiment with the colours as much as I do with the mediums. And yes, it takes time, but it's well worth it in the end. There you go. I've just put them out because I've made up all these lovely colours that I'm going to use. This is a gorgeous grey, browny blue and I'm hoping that the pigments that are in it, like blues and the greys um, and the browns, and it's got ochre in it as well, will come through. You know, when I put it on a piece of paper and I'm going to see if I can you know, really utilise, oh, it's got it everywhere, I'm trying to show you, really utilise its full possibilities and how far you can take it. So I've got some really beautiful colours there. I've got a light blue as well. I've got this beautiful brown and I might well need a grey. So I'm going to do it on tissue paper and on cartridge paper and on some mulberry paper and see what happens. So I'm going to try and stick to some of the colours that I was interested in, which I tend to find a bit difficult, but let's see. So again, the, the density of your pigment will depend on how much water you've got in your mix and how much you really want it to, to move, isn't it? I mean, I, that's, it's quite interesting, but it's too much. I don't like it. So I'm just going to put some more water on that. And I like the arbitrary. Uh, you know, I like seeing the pigments move. And I like them doing their own accord and you just being patient with it and let it do its own accord. And I mean look, that's this just that's just water and a bit of pigment and it's lovely. And again if you you need it on a flat surface so that the you have some control over the pigments a bit. And I really like the way it moves through this paper when it's when it starts wrinkling, run, run, uh, ruckling. So again, just go with it. And I don't, don't particularly like the brush strokes on it. I want it to look much, much, much more organic. You can always soften the brush, brush strokes with a bit of water as well, and make them less evident. So if I was thinking, right, I've got the gray on there, gray and yellow, and maybe the pink as well. So I'm going to go for the yellow. And again, I, I want, I'll have to go for some clean water. Just, I want it thin. And I want a, con, you know, contrast to it being on thin and hardly visible. And these are just very much my personal preferences for colour. You've got to really go with your own gut feeling about colour. And I mean, look at the way it goes. Look at that. Right, go back to my ideas, original ideas. Okay, and there's that pink and green. And it's just really to be add a bit of a shock. Something different in it, something contrasting. 
So we've got this gorgeous green. Get oh, that is absolutely stunning. Again, beautiful, beautiful colour. Okay, well I love that. That's about it really. I don't want to over confuse that. I mean, I've got the space to do it in the studio, but you can go berserk on this. You know, you can do tons and tons of it, can't you? If you have the space for it to dry. And the other thing as well is, as soon as I move this, it's going to move. So in some respects, it's quite nice to be able to leave it, do it in, in situ and then leave it. But I, I'm going to, because I'm filming it here, I'm going to have to move it. So let me get my piece of per, uh, cellophane, which is underneath it. And there you go. Can you see it? Some of it's just lovely. There you are. And I'm going to move this over. And sadly, it will run everywhere. But sometimes it's quite a nice thing. Of course that can be worked on again. I'm going to get a piece of cartridge paper. I would normally do this as one big piece, but I'm going to separate it off into two. Now I don't need the cellophane underneath this. I'm going to wet the surface again. totally wet and start again with much the same colours because I like them and the way you apply it what you use to apply it, it all makes such a difference doesn't it so I'm going to momigami this afterwards the whole thing about momigami is that you you're sealing one side I mean, you seal both sides in Momigami in the end. The idea is that you are creating a surface tension which is cracked and broken when you fold it. And then also cracked and broken so that you can apply pigments that'll seep through the cracks that you make. So if you seal both sides, then it's a very different effect if you seal only one side and then add pigments. So it depends what effect you want, doesn't it? There's no right or wrong, is there? It just depends what you're aiming for and what effect you want. Oh, I mean, you see, I learned that this is really lovely if you're patient. Let this be and then have another go at it with another colour, you know, rather than expecting it all to work at this point. Let's see, that's just dirty water. So we'll see, I'm not quite sure what it'll do. I don't want too much on because I don't want to lose those lovely black marks of the black. So I'm just going to leave that. And again, I just wish I could just literally leave it, but I'm going to have to move it. And a piece of cartridge paper. I want to try and break away from what I sort of generally do. Let's spray it because I like the softness. brown, this lovely pink brown, a load of water, and that's got some green in it. Oh, I mean, I just think that's so beautiful. It's so, like, you just don't have to bother, do you? What I'll do is I'll do one layer of this colour and then see what happens and see if you want more of it moving just give it a spray and what i really like is the green on the edges of it so somehow or other i'm going to pick up some of that green so it's on the brush and in the color in the pigment and see what it does because such a shame i have to move it right, let's see green. 
You see that pigment that I put on there is a brown. Look, isn't it? A ready brown. And what happens is it separates off. All the, the pigments seem to come out of it a bit more once it's sort of used. And you get this separation out of all the colours a bit. So you've got your sort of the, the pinks and things become more evident. Just alters it alters how it moves and how the pigments move. You know, like in watercolour sometimes it's sometimes two pigments don't actually melt into one another properly. They don't actually infuse and tone and what's the word? Blend. Blend into one another. Sometimes they're not compatible. So you're, you're sort of using that, I think. And something like this, where it pools, don't worry about it because it should dry really nicely. It's very tempting to add a bit more. I think I want some grey on there again. But that's too Louisey. I'm not going to put some grey. I want some blue. I want some light blue in there. And again, I want it clean. So I need a clean, clean brush. And then leave it. Oh, I so wish I could leave it there. The other table I work on has got a radiator underneath it. And I can just leave it on there and let it set for a bit. I've got these lengths of tissue paper. Or oh, cleaning paper. They're really good quality. There's lint free or something there for cleaning off glass. I was using them to clean things with. And of course they do this thing where the colours will spread, will separate and spread. So they have a mix of the blue and the green. There's an element of it where the actual pigments separate. In any case, it's, it has some really, really lovely effects. I've, done, I've used it on the tissue paper and it's really, really nice when you don't blend it all in as well. You know, when you leave some areas white and then when you stick it on the other papers, I don't know, it just makes some really lovely marks. So it's just a question of oh, using your brains and using your intuition and going for it, isn't it? I think before I was literally pouring it on, just seeing what it did. And seeing the colours it makes. And again, just letting it be what it wants to be. This was that colour more, wasn't it? And you do not need to cover it all up like I, it appears like I'm going to do. I'm getting a really mucky colour there. And I don't like it. So I think I'm just clean everything off again. as well as the pigments go through and stick the papers together. Let's get another paintbrush. I'm just going to get some of that yellow in. So I'm just getting some yellow, adding a bit of water to it. So I want it both so that I can sprinkle it and spread it. More pigment. And I really like it when the pigments sort of seep between each other as well. Right, so now want some clean green. I'm gonna think some grey from here would be nice on that one. a bit more. So that's the blue with the dirty water basically and it's making it when the, the water's sprayed onto it so that the pigments separate. And again this isn't it. You know you can add more colour to it after this as well. I love this red and brown and you can I'll show you after that but the red pigment hasn't melted. You know the when I made that I think that's about it. See what happens. I do actually want some black in there. Have I got any black? I want some black. 
in black if I can in this one. Right, I've gone very green again. But I will do some pinky ones as well. I like them when they suddenly go random. Right, stop, stop, stop. Okay, well you can see how many colours I used. Um, I really think it's important not to limit yourself with colours. So you, it's really important to get the colours ready, isn't it, first. Otherwise you're just limiting yourself too much. And you've got to remember as well, this, this, this isn't it. This could really change as you go on now, from even now on. Right, let's see what happens. So I'll take those off to dry. And of course they're all going to move when I dry, when I move them, because the paint, the water's going to slip around the place. Right, I'm going to lay them out to dry somewhere. Try not to dribble it all over my paintings. 